Welcome to the Rookies. This is a weekly yeah. stream where we get online and we do Jump Rangers actual play with two people who have never before encountered Jump Rangers before this very game. One of those people is Buster the Destroyer. Buster, please tell everybody what you're about and where to find you. Uh, yeah, I'm a, I, I always say I'm a Star Citizen streamer, but lately I'm more of a, an Oblivion streamer. Nice. I'm a, you know, I'm a star as a streamer who occasionally dabbles in other things, and yeah, lately it's been like a solid month of like oblivion. I probably put in like at least like six hour game sessions three times a week. Yeah, I put in some hours lately. I'm at level twenty. How um, deep is I oblivion still have compared to Skyrim? Because I have only played Skyrim in terms of Elder Scrolls. Look, I've oh. okay. Oh. Oblivion is so good. Like all the things that you like about Skyrim. Mm -hmm. Are the great things about Oblivion? Like they yeah. definitely knew what they knew what to. They've always known like pull that kind of you know, mm -hmm. pull that over because but Oblivion's fantastic. It's just it's fun. It's just not you know it's not as pretty as Skyrim because it's from two thousand six. Right. But what Skyrim's from like God two thousand thirteen fourteen? It's like ten years old now. Yep. I have so, legitimately mixed up aspects of them before and gone. Wait a second. Yeah. No, that was. <laughs> no, that was actually Skyrim. Never mind. A lot of similarities. <laughs> I mean, it's a Bethesda game. You know how they all kind of play. They all have like a like a kind of a, a commonality across them. Yes. So, but but Oblivion's just great. I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. If you've never played it, please play it. It's so much fun. I just have never finished it. I've never finished it. Oh. After 20 years, I've never finished the game. I just get distracted finding everything. Do you think that that is in the cards on this run? You don't want to make any promises. I will start working on the main stuff soon. My 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 community's probably getting sick of me just fine going, oh look, there's oh there's there's some flaxseed. I'm gonna get that flaxseed. Oh cool, there's a cave over that way. Okay, let's go. Oh wait. I think I need to take a quest to finish this cave. Damn. Okay. Oh neat, there's there's Aled ruins over there. Let's go see what's in there. Just oh no, so I forgot my magic weapons, so I can't attack any of these ghosts. Let me go back to the casa. Let me get that taken care of. <laughs> oh wait, while we're over there near Bruma, let's go get some arrows. <laughs> that's, that's literally <laughs> oblivion. I think the best problem you can have is that the side quests are actually funny. And so fun, fun you can get caught yeah. up in them and then go, wait a second. What am I yep. supposed to be doing? And then you're like, yeah, oh, like shit. what? What? Yep. What am I yep. doing? That's nice. That's it's the problem to have. I agree. From a game development standpoint, that's a fantastic issue. To me, yeah, to me, that's the best issue to have is when people can just do a million things with your game. Mm -hmm. The other person anyway. playing this game with us today is Liz Ransdell. Liz is a writer. Oh Liz, yeah, I'm here. Tell people what's going on and, and where to find you. Not much. I'm. Uh, I'm. It's the lull before the storm right now uh our kickstarter did complete things started getting shipped out things are being finalized so the very last things to go out were of course our signed copies because they had to come to us first mm -hmm. and be signed by the artist in arizona and then by me in california and then go back to florida and then get shipped out so that they could get their art their postcards their stickers whatever and so now those are actually making it to people so we're finally done which means it's time to start my very very adult Next project, Curiouser and Curiouser, which is going to be a periodical, but for now, it was entirely written by me and illustrated by my artist. And starting with volume two, we're going to bring in poets and guest artists and guest writers and um, give other people a chance to be seen. Um, and volume two is going to be ghosts. So congratulations. So I'm very excited to, to be ready to finally kickstart that so that we can get moving on it. And then we'll get back to some fun, you know, more safer work, family friendly stuff. So is it, is the, is the, is it just the first issue that's Alice inspired and then ghosts or a different theme or is it ghosts in Alice in Wonderland? No, it, they are entirely different. Mm -hmm. um, I just happened to write these stories because it was in my brain, right? Mm -hmm. And then we're, like I said, we're moving on to ghosts. And then I think possibly pulp. And we're just going to have some fun with it. And Curiouser okay. and Curiouser is something we hope one day we don't have any part in, but just bring people in and showcase them so that people get to see their talent. Um, and then every maybe every once in a while, Stoke Garoni goes by popping back in for a visit too. Sure. Um, but also, we have already started drawing issue two of the Alice comic. 
So, so things are really moving for that. It feels like you're walking through sludge every day. (laughs) (laughs) So you have been busy, just not busy in a visible way. Yeah. Yeah. It's all, it's all foundation right now. Okay. All righty. Well, congratulations on finishing the first issue. That's exciting. I look forward to seeing Thank it. you. Learned a lot at the end of that Kickstarter. <laughs> Good. Well, I'm glad it's working. I'm glad people are supporting the work. That's exciting stuff. Thank you. We appreciate it, too. So, uh, our adventure picks up on board the, the broken, destroyed Loom mothership, which was only just um, repaired and evacuated from the surface of planet Lumina. Uh, Our last session was kind of a strategy session and a strategy meeting in which you and Buster entered into the battery that is keeping safe the the Loom intelligences that were rescued. (laughs) You found Spark, you made contact, and you started discussing plans with regard to what should be done with all of these loom refugees. The ultimate decision that you made is that you would like to raid a loom shipyard and steal a loom mothership. You are certainly welcome to change this decision. I'm not telling you that that's what the... (laughs) Buster, you're Too late now. (laughs) Just to give you a heads up about that. Um... But uh, you you convinced Lux to start checking out the data banks and to find a suitable shipyard to raid and basically find a promising find a promising uh, place to, to go and steal something that might be of service to these loom refugees. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that you have still the pilot from the original Valhaller trapped in a loom containment cell that was built by uh, by Big Mouth during your initial attack and during your initial back and forth exchange with with uh... Buster. You are silent. Yeah, it's because I forgot to unmute okay. myself. Okay, just I just sure. laughed. I was <laughs> laughing, and I said, nothing set in stone. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that there wasn't a malfunction. I wanted to make sure that you were still. No, it was too. me. It was me. I okay. forgot. I thought I hit the button. Good. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad it's not a technical malfunction because yes. that's easier to fix. So, so that's the situation that we're presented with right now. Um. Yeah. I am going to tell you that. Lux has conducted his research. He has con- he has consulted his astra. Now the loom that are in the battery have no idea what's out there, of course, because they have been on planet Lumina in that battery during yeah, the entire time. With like a thousand battery. years, yeah. yeah. They're yeah. weird. They're weirdos. They don't know what's up. But Lux has access to the astra 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 astronomical charts of the um of the mothership. And has consulted them, and has found a suitable place from which to extract loom technology. <laughs> yeah, and um, and you know, are we still in the battery? No, you're out of the battery. You're safe and okay. sound. You're you're and 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 Just... you can come and go from the battery with impunity. Now you have the tools. You have the talent. Right. You're all set. So to like go. one. Once we're out and we're kind of sitting there with Lux too and like Big Mouth and we're all just kind of maybe like just, you know, having a moment Mm -hmm. and Lux is like present on something nearby so that he can hang out. But it's like maybe the best, I mean, like, you know, I'm going to sit there and say, okay, I know my like earlier suggestions are a little bit uh, wild. I recognize that now that I've had time to think in this last ramen noodles <laughs> and <laughs> and you know maybe maybe a good thing to do would find a find a way to because they are not going to be like able to culturally integrate so easily with the rest of the loom without some preparation time 
But I think it's cruel of us to not give them a fighting chance at influencing their people when they are actually supposed to be leaders of their people. However, if they're zealots, if they're crazy, we don't really know. But uh, the thing is, is like maybe they can live in a colony. Maybe they can like have their own stuff to take over or something. And they can live in a colony and they can at least like have the experience of getting out of that battery. Because I think it's kind of, I don't think like no matter, no matter what their agendas are in life, I think it's kind of cruel to keep them like pent up. Well, well, we can't. I mean, we, we spent so long getting them out that at some point we have to at least, we have, we have to finish the mission. I just realized that like with our interaction with Spark and how like, you know, aloof spark was from their own memories. Mm -hmm. That perhaps they're, I mean, they all have to be experiencing that to some degree. Now, the thing is, is when you put them back, when you plug them back into the system, do they suddenly remember a bunch of things? Does like new, do, do they, do they assimilate a bunch of new information? Like what, how? That's the thing, is Lux, there a way if, to get them new information? Lux, if you were, yeah, like Lux, if you were to extrapolate and take like an educated guess here what do you think it's going to look like for loom that old to plug into loom this new imagine do you recall, okay do you recall speaking with me when you first met me which part i did a lot of speaking <laughs> <laughs> yes do you yes i remember what you were like do you remember our personality conflicts Yes. Imagine being surrounded by 500 of me and communicating with all of me at the speed of light. Right, the Borg. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you guys. Okay, our, I'm just going to say. Our televised historical documents. This, your, this Star your... Trek stuff that my parents showed me like three episodes of that I've watched a million times. By the way. And the, 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 the books, they, it's, it's. It's about right now. If anybody is watching this, I urge you in the strongest possible terms to take a moment and pay respect to Buster's t-shirt, by the way. With my what? <laughs> pay respect to Buster's t-shirt. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a George and Gracie t-shirt. It's funny, my granny, I talked to, I, real, real side, real quick, yeah. at a game. My, I, I talked to my granny on FaceTime today, right? I was just talking to her, whatever, <laughs> hanging out. And she's like, oh, I like your shirt. I said, yeah, it's a Star Trek shirt. She's like, oh, I thought it was a George and Gracie Burns shirt. <laughs> and Aww. I was like, I was like, you're granny, you're, you're, you're spot on. While you're also like, this is the part you don't know. Yep. And I literally, I literally explained Star Trek four to her. Chat. Oh, I'm <laughs> a first-time chatter here. Real AJ Jones does does in fact pay respect to the shirt. Thank you for joining like, okay. us, AJ. Thank you so much. Okay, so. Granny. There's a whole Star Trek movie where these whales. <laughs> yep. That's it fantastic. was my favorite growing up too. It was me cool. too. It was it's, it's my it was favorite. Movie. It's my favorite. Of it was all my time. favorite growing up as a Mormon too. Mm. Oh yeah. Where yeah. Spock's like, where I'm um, Kirk is talking about Spock, and he's like, too much LDS. And I was like, why is it that comparing Mormons <laughs> to drugs is always the best? <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, back Anyhow. in game. Yep. Back in game. Yep. Sorry. So, so you know, Lux, Lux assures you their, their individuality will melt nearly instantaneously. And oh, what you, I'm sorry, I just missed that. Their individuality will melt very nearly instantaneously and be washed away by a tidal wave of consensus information. Right, you talk about this all the time, Lux. You've said, like, the best idea is kind of what, like, like, your consensus is based on sort of, like, some, what's the, I mean, is it, it's consensus, right? It's consensus of the group. Yes. So, what if it's 60% of the group likes it, it's it's the answer. It doesn't matter that 40% like are kind of weird about it. Very rarely right? does only 60% of a consensus exist. How do they come to consensus? Is it like basically speed light debates? Bullying. Bullying? Yes. What? 
<laughs> the loom respects what in all matters. So basically, whoever shouts the loudest wins. Yes. Okay, this happened on Earth a lot. <laughs> okay, let me let me find something for you. <laughs> You know what? You know what? You know what? Can we run an experiment here? No. I mean, not like a big one. What What are you proposing? Do you have... Let me ask you something, Lux, just because I'm curious now. Because it, it, it there's so much of our history that I... And I'm like 10. I don't know all of it. I've been for 10 years. Okay? Yes. But like my dad says this like all the time. That like... Like, if you don't know your history, you're bound to repeat it, right? So what if that also applies to knowing other people's history? Like, if you, like, here, and then she's, like, going to, like, in her device, like, would she have, like, digital books? Would she have, like, stuff? Like, oh, about, you know like, they're still making us history? learn. Course, yeah, like I would hope that there's like databases of like what's been recovered, like what we actually do know. Like the digit, you know, obviously it can't be across platforms, but if I go into a port, like can I plug in and get new books? Much of the information in the battery has been lost to the loom over time because the loom see no concern over repeating history. Loom history, right? But I mean, I mean, our history, human history, and my own things. The loom consider themselves to be perfect and therefore do not require change. Right. But what if I gave you perspective by giving you information on humans I and their history from the perspective that you have shared with me thus far? Right. So would you like to know the history of humans? Perhaps. OK, let's start. <laughs> Back. OK, so there was like these these like proteins. And they like, <laughs> and boom, humans happened, okay? But before them was dinosaurs, which, you know, the, the guys, the Saurians? Yes. We had those on our planet a long time ago, but they weren't intelligent as far as we know. They got hit by a freaking giant rock from outer space, and boom, okay? Here, there's better descriptions of this in my thing here. Are you saying that giant rocks are the most effective tool with which to annihilate our enemies? I mean, asteroids, maybe. Hmm. That's not the that's not the lesson to take from this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to like pull up some digital history books. Okay. On humans, like I'm going to basically give them like like a. I'm not going to give them everything. I want to like give them like. Kind of the essentials, the classics, you know what I mean? So I'm going to give him, like, what I would have, like, maybe some things I would have stored on my device, like educational materials of my own you that have, I have to have look at. Ton, you have a ton of, all Jump Rangers, okay. Jump Rangers basically carry the mail. Among other things, Jump Rangers are the brains. Right, right, so, right. and so, so they, they probably have, have a lot of information that they have access to just offhand, you like, that they could pull up you have a lot on of their pad. On your yeah. Pad, yes, in case anybody so... Has. I'm going to find, like, a way to, like, upload to him, like, like the history, like, literally human history and, like, essential classic literature. Okay. Okay. That, like, is it, as, as this is plays, happening, is there a way to do this for the loom and the battery? Yes. Well, let's, right, but maybe, like, we just see that, like, luck, like, this is what the experiment is. Like, I want to give this stuff to Lux and I want to see what his like honest reactions are and his honest impressions of humans are before because I wouldn't want to like give this to all of them and then use it as like then like to upload themselves into super robots and then just like take out humans because suddenly they understand human, they have context, cultural context of humans. I trust Lux to understand that like I'm trying to give Lux perspective because Lux appreciates this now. But, like, I think what Lux is saying about bullying, humans have a history of that wrecking our world before we got our crap together. Yes, absolutely. 
I see your so point. maybe the perspective of another race struggling through bullying as a means of power. I mean, you go ahead. You should hear what my mom says about what they used to say to <laughs> girls. <laughs> Lux. <laughs> you probably don't have genders very much or any at all. You've established That's like that a whole used, thing. You've established that there used to be gender on 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 planet Luna. You've established this because there were gender oh, right. lizards in the back. You don't have gender now, but but yeah. But okay, okay, okay. Here, here, Lux. You gotta read this. You're gonna read it in like five seconds. It's gonna be great. Luck, I've read it. You're like you did? Okay. <laughs> did you did you did you like uh I, I made sure to include Peter Pan in there. That was my favorite when I was little. <laughs> oh, are you kidding? My wife's favorite is Peter Pan as well. In case you're not aware. Did that's... you include Alice in um, Wonderland? And yes, and Zorro. <laughs> God, I love Zorro. Me too. Huge fan. Huge fan. I'll talk to you about that later. Okay. Anyway. Would you like to talk about the Loom Shipyard? I would love to talk about the Loom Shipyard. I'm, right. just, chilling, I'm just chilling here waiting for the Loom Shipyard. It's my little squishy cow. Yeah, I, oh I, realize, I realize Can't that Dan Dan is hoping for a sign that Lux has internalized all the information that Dan Dan has just given them. And I will say very simply, Buster, that Lux shows no outward sign of having internalized the information. I know that Lux's methods of communication can be frustrating. You don't know. You don't know what effect that information has had. Let it simmer. <laughs> Lux takes yeah. a minute. Lux is kind of <laughs> slow, actually, for somebody who moves at light speed. Yeah. I mean, haven't you heard of genius idiots? Yes. <laughs> I have. That's how it feels. Yep. Lux, 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 yep. Lux is really fast with Lux's own ideas. But not yeah. so quick with anybody Let's else's. Take your time to process. Let's talk about the shipyards. Let's go. What's up? <laughs> on the screen. Um, actually, yeah, on the screen, because they don't need they don't need holographs. This whole this whole interface is something you have built to communicate with Lux. Lux doesn't have screens because Lux Right, 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 right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so on the screen, you see what looks like a gigantic gaseous space cookie. With a, a molten space what? Orb. It's like a space cookie, a disc with lots of okay, okay, okay. planetary chips stirred up yeah, inside yeah. it and a big nugget, a big star in the middle. This is a system inside, and then whoosh, there's a massive nebula on the screen full of full of stars. Big that mouth Big Mouth looks at you and says, I think that's the all star nebula. Okay. Okay. And how and far is Lux, Lux how far out are we going for this? <laughs> this is this is we are Lux says we are we are currently in moon space. This this shipyard is only um, six hours outside of our flight path. Okay. That's not bad. So okay, but that's that also gives us time to plan. So we got to have it have Lux, something ready before we go in. Lux, of course, presents. Uh, a whole string of numbers as to the identity of this nebula, and Big Mouth says, "No, that's the All Star Nebula. Uh, that's the All Star System inside the All Star Nebula. That's the first star we saw." Lux says, "This is the All Star System, and there's the giant space cookie. This is a star inside one of the largest stellar nurseries in the galaxy, and the only stellar nursery of this scope that is visible from Saurian space." <laughs> This stellar nursery sar serves as a ideal platform for loom manufacturing efforts because of the low gravity and easy accessibility of natural resources. And you zoom in on on the uh, on this on what what passes for the planetary system. Right now, this planetary system is still being formed, so there's no actual planets orbiting this star. It's just one massive debris field, and the gas and all of the chunks of rock and asteroids that are orbiting this star will, over the course of millions of years, hundreds of millions of years maybe, collapse into planets and atmospheres unless the loom mine it first, in which case that will never happen. 
And right now, that's exactly what's happening. The loom are building these massive metal lattice works, very much like spider webs, between these asteroids and manufacturing facilities. And as Dorians. Said, the loom. This is a loom mining station. The reason why it's so advantageous for the loom is actually partially because the Saurians will never come here. No, oh, I meant to say Tholians. Y'all are like Tholians. Oh, I see. I see. Yep. <laughs> there's no there's no air, there's no water, there's no food, so there's not a lot to support Saurian life here. As a result, it's an That's... ideal place for the loom to operate because nobody's gonna bother them. There's a lot of radiation. Totally perfect for the loom. Yep. So they build these massive yeah. Webs between these asteroids, they're harvesting all the metals and they're transporting using their dwarge robots all of those resources into massive manufacturing facilities that exist at the center of these webs that are spread throughout the solar system. The manufacturing facilities are producing all kinds of different um, resources. One of the advantages of giving Lux your database is that Lux now understands how you refer to different kinds of loom robots. Yeah, big so big chonky chonker, chonk steamer, chonk steiner. Yeah. <laughs> Little bloopy bloop. Yeah. Because the All Star system is so heavily um mind and because the all-star system is so heavily populated by manufacturing it has become one of the most advanced manufacturing centers outside of saurian space also because it is okay. so far from saurian space uh, right the relative safety gives us gives loom the ability to manufacture just about anything they might need as a result the all-star system has a tendency to focus on exotic design Ooh. so it'd be fun Ooh, <laughs> I propose exotic. That we, I propose that we steal a troll. Hell, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a troll. Wait, wait. Do you understand? Did you really observe the context of what troll means and how it has fifteen hundred different meanings? So, in the context of, I know what you're saying. I'm just messing with you. Human, adults. human, human lexicon. <laughs> And the designation of loom machinery as Nordic mythological bestiary. This particular device is called a troll because it is giant. And I loom, thought trolls were small. Loom zeroes in on, on this. No, trolls are giants. And it's, oh. it zooms in. in the yeah, they're giant. You're right. They're giant kin. They're giant kin. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So there is a huge, a, a, a readout of a huge factory pumping out what appears to be motherships. But the design of these motherships is a little bit different. They appear to be a little less heavily equipped. They have fewer hangers. And as mm -hmm. the design of this mothership pulls up on the screen, you can see that's because they actually transform. Because they actually transport? Transform into giant robots. Oh, transform. They're transformers? This is a mothership-sized transforming robot. Do they go... <laughs> they would have to. They would have to. Is How else are you going to... No, she's asking to... Lux. She's asking Lux. Do they go... <laughs> uh, Lux says... No, of course not. And then produces an audio file for you that is exactly what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's pretty sweet. So yeah. That's actually pretty cool. Like y'all have some cool stuff. I want to roll up and home in a troll. Dude, could you imagine going to school on that? <laughs> she looks over at you. <laughs> Who brought one, it to school? One troll could house the the rescued loom refugees as a collective and maintains the facilities to allow those loom to build a colony of their own, manufacturing facilities of their own, and at the same time to defend ourselves effectively. Okay. 
Let's do that. That's a pretty good idea. (laughs) Yeah. We'll just like drop them off and let them have a little, little, let them do some crafts. Do we know where we want to take the troll once we have it? I feel like an escape plan as long as well as a route. Yeah. I think, but you know, like I I think an end game is probably a pretty good idea. Yeah. Do not need to worry about where the troll will go once we have it because we will take you home. And then we will find a place for the troll. Wait, who and you? You like you and Spark? Spark and their and myself people and the hundred and eighty other refugees. And so you're gonna you're gonna like go with them? I had assumed I would. Oh, okay. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> would you want to come with us? I don't yes. know. Yes. What's that? Maybe. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> What's that? <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we could maybe we have other things. I mean, we move around a lot. We have mail to deliver. <laughs> Do they have anything small we could take with us that we have something for us? Just saying. I never got my hoverboard. Yeah, we need a ship because, like, we got to do stuff for our people, you know, too. Like, we want you to go have a good life and do your stuff. But, uh. I'm just saying, know. if it happens to be something we can pick up along the way, I wouldn't mind a ship, too. So, just going to go home with nothing but people. So let's take a minute to talk about this while you guys are thinking about your sort of larger plan for this. Because something that you would know is that okay. it is possible and has been done. There's two ways that this happens. Really, there's only one way that this happens. But there are human colonies on board Loom motherships. Okay? Mm. How, how, right. how and why is the question. So the why is very simply the obvious reason of needing to explore loom space and, and needing to establish trade routes between co- you. There are a few human planets with, with uh, loom planets with human colonies on them. And yeah. humans do need to get traffic to and from those colonies. So they need access to loom motherships. It does happen. Yeah, and I mean, and we've having got a ton of colonists actually, on our mothership right now. And motherships. having one where they actually have safe passage on from the loom is a huge advantage. So it might mm-hmm. be possible to talk Lux into allowing... To a, broker it. Now, here's what I want you to know, is that right. these colonies like are literally built onto loom motherships. So, I mean, like, for example, the most famous human colony is on a mothership that everybody calls the Nikola Tesla. The Nikola Tesla has a regular trade route specifically between um, Planet Link and Planet Clearance because they're collecting loom trash, loom waste, and just mm-hmm. building it what, where you thought you were going, right? The Nikola right. Tesla is always making that route. So they built a they, – they literally – because the loom don't pay so much attention to what's happening outside their spaceships, as long as you don't use too much power and you don't create too much of a mass differential, as long as you don't make yourself known, they will just weld right. habitats to the exterior, like literally to the outside of the loom mothership, which is what they did like, here. Like barnacles, yeah. That's exactly right. They brought in, they used a couple of Hermes transports, and in a, they... They attacked the mothership in order to distract all of the robo hammers and fighter craft, and they literally went in there and deposited a couple of bases using Hermes transports, drop teams to weld them into place, and now they just sneak into, you know, basically the Loom spaceport, and they sneak aboard the Tesla and shuttle people back and forth from this base whenever it comes to Planet Link. And there's, it makes the transition to Planet Clearance, and as you may or may not know, the university, like. quote unquote. Yeah, yeah, like rats on a ship. Yeah. So they, they yeah, exactly. So they make trans they make transports back and forth from the University of Clearance to what's called Itty Bitty Base. Which is what it's called. Or just the bitty. And it comes back and forth. So with something like this, you might actually be able to build a bigger colony. Because you would actually have access to it. You might actually be able to build a loom colony with enough space for hangers. You might be able to build a loom colony with enough space for to assist even the loom with minotaurs, with Hercules transports. You might actually be able to 
do something bigger and, and kind of unprecedented here. That's something. Okay. <laughs> thank you. No, thank it's, you. I'm glad that you stopped us like for that context because that's important. Because I mean, that's kind of part of what we've been doing all along is trying to make friends with these yep. loom okay. so that we're not being attacked from quite as many. That sides. plays into our needs, but it also like, like I was, I was kind of having that thought when we started to talk about the colony, and I thought maybe like these colonists would want to like maybe a good. You know, we'll tell them, like, anybody that wants to go to, like, a colony on a planet, like, we'll, we'll get you to one or wherever we're going. But, like, if you want to live on a spaceship colony, like, if we can get this figured out, maybe they could be aware of the colony. And then it could actually be more, like, beneficial to both parties. So I'm going to stop Lux. So this is where we're going to stop with Lux and after he explains all this. And just kind of say, well, okay, here's the deal, Lux. Here's a thought, too. You may not know it, and you may, I wouldn't have given him, like, that specific documentation of, like, I wouldn't have never given him, like, like critical information about, like, where yeah, we're humans are. We're not telling are. him exactly yeah. about the Nicolaita Right. Networks. Just gave him, like, the, the, <laughs> the histories up to when we became a space, space-faring people. Mm -hmm. um, but, or where we're at now, you know, but, uh, like, I would, I, I, I basically am like, so here's the deal, and this is something you may not be aware of. And I'm not going to tell you where and how, but humans exist on men on, on several loom ships. We are aware. Okay. How? I mean, we try to not bother you, but <laughs> humans keep appearing on planets where we land. Oh well, yeah. Well, anyway, so <laughs> you're aware. <laughs> you're aware that we're kind of hitching a ride, right? Yes. What if this colony situation that we're talking about with that, what was it, the troll ship? Mm -hmm. with the, Is that yep, what it was? Yep, you can call it a... Yeah, okay. Yep. In fact... I, just, I couldn't remember if I was getting the terminology right. You, you know what? They just called it a troll, but you called it a troll ship, and that's better. So here's the cool thing about being me, is that I'm actually the game designer. <laughs> so I'm just going to call it a troll ship. If that's okay. Troll ship. But <laughs> this troll this 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 troll ship that you're talking about that we want to like put your people on. What if it was like half and half here? What if what if some of if, if some of these colonists wanted like game like who who knows what that could what that could create? If I mean I know that these loom that are about to get uploaded into that are like maybe we don't know how they're gonna react to all this. So that's something to be considered before we make that decision. Here but you speak, what you see, you see, um, you see, Big Mouth start sketching on his backpack. Yeah, sketch it out, Big Mouth. Uh, and he, looks on, on, like on his, what, what, yep. and he holds up and he's like, "It's a backpack." I can tell you what it would make. That's where the most structural support is going to be. It's a backpack colony. Yes. Right. But the thing is, is like, what if it's just more than just humans like stowing away and y'all just being okay with it? What if it's actually a mutually beneficial, like, like almost symbiotic relationship? You know, Big like mouth. what are things, what are problems on loom ships that loom can't handle that humans could? And what are things that loom could do to benefit humans? Like, like, what's the what? Who scratches each? Where do we scratch each other's backs? Luck says, Luck says there are no problems on some ships that humans can handle. However, I mean, however, none of these refugees would be alive if not for you. So we have when, unique problems on this loom ship that could benefit from humans. And at that point, Big Mouth says. My 18th birthday is when I have to retire as a jump ranger, and I need to find a job for myself in the colonies. Big Mouth says, I would found this colony. Yeah! I would, I would build this colony. 
Yeah. You know, we could get behind that. I mean, Big Mouth was kind of a schmuck when we first. <laughs> yeah, you've really Not changed in the was, last month he, or two. He was, a bit of, he, he was a bit of dead weight for a minute, but he's really proven himself. Especially, you know, once he recovered from being taken over by Lux. Like, oh, I think the two of you kind of did something to each other. And I that think was you kind both of the most grown up I've that. seen him. So, I think you two like really like did something to each other in a good way. Yeah, I think we so touched, too. They they literally touched brain. Yeah, <laughs> and now we've got, and now we've yep. got um, gel. Yeah, you know, be, to be our yeah. third. You're gonna that have we to gotta bring. Gel. We gotta yeah. bring her in. So you know we're gonna be really busy bringing up another jump ranger, yeah. who's you know like right right at the right age to be coming in anyway. So mm -hmm. so know. if this is Big Mouth's colony, you would have the ability to come back. You know what I mean, or to ask for help or do what you needed to do as long as you can yeah. find them. That would that would yeah be a mobile you. safe house for us. Now you the one thing you need to know is you're not going to have the ability to communicate if you leave. You would have, unless you use your your psychic abilities. I shouldn't say you can't. You can, but it's not as easy as you might that think. Is a, that is a later problem. That is a later problem, but I'm just giving That's you a, a sense problem. of it. But it's something that, that Jell and I will think about, because we'll figure it out. The reason also, I yes, but I just wanted to make it clear, like, there's no interstellar radios. Yeah. Right. right. That's right. something to, because that's something that you would just know. I don't know. Maybe really cool maybe if, Big Mouth is gonna fit one. Maybe they would be pretty one. cool if the, the King of the Loom. It would be pretty cool if um the Loom made a few things specifically for human use. That yeah, were, that's a thought. That weren't and attachments I would, and I can't, yeah. you know might be a reason to provide them with additional materials and stuff, scavenging from from other from other wrecks. So that they're not beholden to the loom at large, we can bring them stuff that that normally would go to planet clearance and whatnot. I'm I just mean, saying. Think, think know, about it. What stuff? Think about the backups that that you might. I mean, y'all probably have like all kinds of like backup system and backup powers and all that stuff. But like, if y'all, if all of y'all are shut off into a battery, you're done. Like that's it. Like somebody, if they had the right tool, if they did it the right way, they could just like. Upload y'all off of everything, like like download you and just pack you in a freaking USB drive, like these guys, you know, like how that leaves you super vulnerable. Like Some there was no way y'all were ever gonna save those hundred eighty three souls without us, which you recognize, Lux, and I recognize that you recognize that. But like, you know, it's that... like our old stories about vampires. Yeah, it, they had people who you know watched their backs when they yeah. were when they were like, I won't get into it. It's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> like the count. Right there. But those are my favorite monsters. He would be like one, two. You know, he was great. And both like my... Lux, 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 Lux simply says, "I I believe it is a good idea." And Big Mouth says, "So we we steal the troll ship, and then we." I guess park it somewhere off of Planet Link and broker a deal with Commander Paxis to get the work done and get the colony built. And we'll have to do that in secret. We'll have to make sure that doesn't get picked up by the Saurians or the Loom. But it's either got. Yeah, to but we we have to get these Loom on board with the plan before we put anybody or anybody at risk of them turning. I think that's going to be the least of our problems because. Once they taste a little freedom, if we can get them, if we can get the ship before we release them, and that's the first thing they're released to, I think it'll be an easy sell. Lux I think says I can, I can connect to them. Yeah, uh, if you Lux can, will if make you, sure. If you can build a connection to the, the bridge systems the of, the, of the mothership, then I can connect to them and I will, I will convince them. Yeah, we'll put. Yeah, no. We'll obviously you'll get in the ship first and get it all ready, and then we'll, we'll work on that with oh, big, no. big mouth. I think. What I think if we are you going gotta to need them. I think that if we're going to succeed, we will need to all of them. Yeah, we need to. We need to hook. We need to hook Lux up to the battery. We need a Trojan horse. <laughs> ah. Dad, you look at you learning stuff, Lux. <laughs> you go 
I'm like, oh, I'm like suddenly you're using all, all these all words that we get and we understand. Of all this stuff that you gave him. I will say, <laughs> you know, now that you probably fully understand that we're very young. There's probably some things you can't say to us. I'm just saying. My mom that? Really at you. <laughs> There's some of those books There's she some, hasn't let me read yet. There's some grown up words. Flex There's those some grown, grown up, up words. words now. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I just thought about that. Lux probably knew those words from when Lux was inside Big Mouth anyway. That's but true. clearly yeah. had figured He's out just, that we weren't allowed to know 17. them. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he's seventeen and big for his britches. So, Dang. Mm, One time I, I think Lux's whole concept mom, of age is she goes pretty mad at this point because Lux actually went from being someone who has age and years to someone who doesn't even know how long they're going to last anymore. Has no real concept of whether how Lux exciting that is. I want that life. Give me that life. I want to live like that. Mm. So if you want to send any vampires my way, <laughs> just let me know ahead of time so I can catch some sun sunrises and sunsets in the meantime. That's an interesting conversation. <laughs> There's more than one yeah. way to get a cat. We'll just say that. Um, <laughs> so so back to the <laughs> back to back to back to my brain just went down a rabbit. I'm sorry. I'm on to it's it's our brains hey. already. We've been doing that a little bit today. So it's okay. I think I think we've all pulled one today. It's cool. Explain it to seven year old me. What are the steps we have to take to get the troll ship? Just to yeah. get there. So first, Lux has to be able to communicate with the colonists in the battery, right? Yes. And all, all, all that plan. Lux needs for that. And and, and Big Mouth literally says, I'll I'll get to work on that right now. You I figured that'd be a big mouth job. Yep. Good job, big mouth. We'll just make sure the big mouth doesn't screw it up here. And then we have to get there undetected. That's not great. And remain undetected and get out of there with the troll ship. Are we taking the mothership back too, or because it's damaged, are we leaving that? Are we switching or are we grabbing? Well, I think we should. I think we should. Bash and grab. Yeah, I think we should throw I think the so too. I think we should I, physically throw the mothership at the base. Oh. <laughs> okay. You said that rocks are an effective weapon. I, I agree. It it would definitely and then the loom would not expect it. Yeah, that would be so weird for them. So like it would absolutely throw them and there would be so much chaos. I love chaos. Chaos is the best. It's the best time to get anything you want to get. Bam Bam's really good at creating chaos and then I sneak in and grab stuff. The problem hey. is we've been doing this a minute. Physically, we will need to connect the battery to a troll ship in order to upload yeah. the game intelligences. Right. Or I mean, though, just like we did with this. Or we will need to connect we didn't upload the battery yet. to the factory. Now, if we connect the battery to the factory, we will be facing much greater opposition. Yeah, I don't like that at all. Because then, yeah. then all of a sudden, they're getting bullied from all of the other loom that are in the factory. They're yeah, and they have no getting they, bullied they, by us. They need to. They need to be able to have some individualism between. That's why they need this thing where they can do. The, they can be in different units and they can actually like exist as individuals for a minute. Because some of them probably been getting bullied for a thousand years. Yes. And they're sick of it. Like, <laughs> Spark. Yeah, Spark you, was like. Having said that, you now realize. You now realize that's probably exactly what Loom experienced. What, what, what Lux experienced. Lux has probably been in that culture from the day they left planet Lumina to the day you met them. I thought I mean, Spark was very nice, though. I mean, and, and, and Spark is very nice. Spark was very nice. Spark had a really cute apartment. Um, here's here's the deal. By the way, Spark looks good, Lux. This is a question, Lux, and this and and maybe I've asked something like this before, but like at, at your base, like let's let's talk about bare bones of what your existence is. You are a program, right? Like if if I contextualize it to computers. Your artificial intelligence. No. Can I Your ask a question? Uploaded intelligence. Yes. Right. Oh, go ahead. 
Ask your question. Lux, what was your job? Yeah. I was a dwarf pilot. And what was your purpose? To maintain loom structures and maintain so, machines. So taking guy? the troll ship is right up your alley for things that you can do really well at. Yes. And you know how the factories work. Yes. All right, can let's... we get can we get the troll ship and get the batter get the the colonists onto the troll ship the the loom colonists onto the troll ship without any interference where we have to run them through the factory? There are no we... life signs in the All Star system except for you. <laughs> <laughs> it will be challenging to move your colonists to the troll ship and they will be very likely detected on the mothership the troll ship okay. has the capability to fight its way out of the factory but if the troll ship fights its way out of the factory it will very likely destroy the factory and which is so, bad if the colonists are not on the troll ship when that happens uh, okay Okay, so so how we go about this? Can we dock? Potentially, this is a relatively inoperable mothership. Right, that's, that's why we broken. were throwing it so that because there are very few reasons for the loom to not simply discard this mothership. Right, docking the mothership would be suspicious. Why are we talking? Okay. Why, especially given that the mothership is in the grip of a Valhaller, why are we here? Hmm. Why are I we always not? forget. I what always if forget we, that we what can if, apart. Okay, hear me out. What if it's just a drifting in kind of situation where all the power's in? They're still going to come look for us, though. They're going to see it and be wondering why. Yeah, they're, they're, they're going to see it's like an hour out or something, aren't they? And then but I always forget them. that the mothership and the Valhalla come apart. Yes. So once we chuck the mothership and distract it, we buy ourselves a little time. Yes. Alternatively, the Valhalla could be used to steal. Yeah. <laughs> But ha but yeah, but the, we still have the, the issue of getting people on and off things. Well, if they're on the Valhaller and the Valhaller steals the troll ship, the Valhaller. But this has is the Valhaller I mean, has like, like no it, room. The Valhaller has no life support. The Valhaller is basically three massive robotic arms with a node at the top large enough to grab the the mothership. And at the oh, I got I almost forgot. I got to put that in the thing. So, uh, but yes, having done that. Um, the 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 Valhaller has like rockets, massive engines on the wrists where it grabs onto the thing. So it's basically just three big, right, with engines, three yeah. big things. With I see what you're saying. Like the best thing to do would be like like as far as just doing it is if we didn't have colonists aboard, would be like dump, you know, like come in hot. Throw this freaking thing at at them, and then latch onto that guy and book it, right? Beetle. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like so, again, now dash create, and grab. Exactly. So what we need to do is we need to figure out how to how to hold everybody. Yeah. Or, what can what can we do to maybe create? A, we don't need life support for a temporary thing. Like everybody can put a suit on and like make it work. Somehow, but we have to figure out what the make it work looks like. Like we got to be able to sell this to the grown-ups. Can know, we right? weld stuff to the Valhaller? Can we weld? Can we take pieces of this ship and create something to weld to the Valhaller? I mean, how much time we got for we're there, right? Like, <laughs> like it's... we can stop. If you need to stop, you can stop. So, the answer to your question, Buster, is clearly yes. And you know, from yeah. personal experience that. That's, that's how the way you, we do that, it. That's how you do it. So what you're saying is, 
you want to take the life support component of this ship and just weld it to the ball hauler on the outside. Right. You then we no longer have that issue. All you have yeah. is at that point the fact that you are the only life signs in the system, which is a little bit challenging, and you are going to have to figure something out. Yeah, well, let's find a way to mask that in, in scans. Right, because they are scanning. This is a this is a situation where they are scanning all the time. They're looking for stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Most of the time, the answer might be might be to make it appear as we're if, as if we're some very insignificant life life sign, mm -hmm. like little birds or rat, like something that would maybe be a scavenger, like more of a scavenger on a ship than humans even. Mm. And I and and in fact says says says. Lux, Bahalers are coming and going from the system all the time to transport empty motherships and and so that won't look suspicious at all. Yeah, they'll expect that. They would, provided we can forge the appropriate clearances. Oh, that's oh, that'd all be you, fine. Lux. That's oh. all you. That's all you have, Big Mouth. <laughs> Yeah, we could do that. It's not, Maybe my, it's not our job. You never know. Wait. I mean, you kind of respond to psychic intervention. What if we Jedi mind trick them? These aren't the droids you're looking for. I think. So my my dad so, said Jedi mind tricks are not as cool as Starfleet, but that's fine. I think we have figured out that we can do it. We got somebody on board that can like help that you. That is going to require a bit of a power boost. Well, even I mean, we've got Jell. Jell can help with that. Maybe we can build something that will like give you like psychic like radio powers. I wonder if Spark could help us. I don't know I if I trust Spark. Lux to help us. I trust Lux, but I think Spark might have some perspective. But we don't have Lux, anything to put Spark Lux into. Lux is going to have a better sense of protocol. Yeah, than, Spark. than they are. Spark, yeah, Spark and everybody inside that colony has no idea what the Lord have been doing, in particular for the last, let's say, 500 years. They might they might have something of a grip on the first 500 years. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, because but they could have been could still plugged in to stuff a little bit, yeah. Things things don't change instantaneously, but by now this this society has become so distilled and so down to what it is that that but but if you're willing to trust Lux I I, I don't know, Big Mouth should I trust Lux? I don't know. I'm a little, no, a little nervous after after. I think, I think we that should. Big, Big mouth, mouth was. takes a deep breath and looks at you, <laughs> like from from like from his pile of wires, and says, "I trust him." Okay. They're like really, they're like big mad after that now. first time. Uh, clearly, uh, you clearly they have had effect on each other. Look, yeah, they're I like soul buddies. It. I think we can do it if we have the right. Signal to use to jam, and we we're gonna need that for Lux. I think Jell and I can do. It. Like I think we can do it, but we're going to need the right message. Oh, I know. It. Like the spore were easy. They were easy. All you needed was white noise for the spore. But I don't know that the loom would be. I think that would actually be suspicious to the loom. They need a different signal. And I don't know that I can produce that signal. I think that signal needs to come from a loom. That's all I'm saying, but I think we can do it. That's what I'm saying. That's and that's kind of what I'm saying is like use, like find a way to push you into like your power into loom technology so that like you can affect them from that level. But what does Lux think? Does Lux think we can do it? Having experienced it back on... Back on the I planet. mean, Luke possessed, he didn't possess somebody for like a month. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, what if we could possess them? That would be so cool, but we shouldn't say that. Yeah, but, but what would happen to our bodies? Ugh. <clears throat> I just need a signal for now. Let's not, let's not muddy the waters yeah. here. <laughs> so, what do you think that signal would look like? I if feel I like it would be a lot more 
computer than kid. Okay. I feel I don't know. That's what makes me nervous. Yeah, I and they'd be hop in there and just so say hi. Like Maybe I could be loud enough that they would just discombobulate them. That's what I'm saying. Amplify think, you, like like put you at an amplified level. Binary might be more, you know, useful in making them not be suspicious. Than, yeah, that's fine. Then so, me saying well, hi. Really sure, loud. but there's another element to this, which you have a sense now of how Loom culture works. So I have memes. They have, yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> you are going to have to radiate toxic masculinity. <laughs> I can, can do that. You can do that. You can, you can be a convincing, you can be a convincing bully. Bruh. Do <laughs> you know how much we listen to, to Big Mouth on the way over here? I do. I do. Yeah. All right. He's not that said. toxic. All right. No, but he's a lot more toxic masculine than I am. That's true. All right. Not only that, but I think Lux picked enough of it up that Lux could give us the message pretty well, too. Lux may not if... be capable of of faking like Lux, Lux, you may have to do this yourself. Lux isn't very devious. Lux is yeah. He's Lux, not. He's not good at Lux deception. Is kind of a bulldozer. He's kind of a he. Look, look at Lux. He he lives in like like this place. Like you can't be deceptive. Like everything's open all the time. Not when you're not when you're absolutely sure that you're the the right one. Right, yeah. right. When you're when you're like mm, actually right. all the time. I can be right. But the point being is that <laughs> I'm that small and people don't my listen point, to me much, but I can be right. <laughs> my point being that that Lux can't hide anything by the nature of how they exist together. Yes, it's true. It yes. can't. He can't deceive. He literally doesn't get how to deceive because. Right. It doesn't but, exist in his culture. And yeah. when it does, I'm sure if somebody tries to say, well, no, that's not true. And it is true. And it doesn't matter if it's true or not. What the, what the majority says is true is what's true. Yep. So, so deception afford, doesn't even have a chance. Can yep. we afford to, to, to have Lux and Big Mouth and I all kind of focused at once? Because if I, because if Big Mouth helps me too, then that's the, like, I need him focused. I can't have him just being, like, in the room while I'm doing something else entirely. He's going to have to. I'm going to eat a snack. snack. You're gonna I just feel like if I'm, a, if I'm overpowering an entire factory of Loom, that's the biggest, scariest thing I've ever done. And I faced off with the Spore Queen. You will have, Big Mouth looks at you and says, this is going to be happening. Someone needs to lead the colonists onto the onto the troll ship. Someone needs to physically, who knows Loom technology, who understands their way around. Not that they don't, but this is a different thing. So who's going to help me? Don't make me do this by myself. Jell says, I'll That's help it. you. Lux says, I'll you just you. been hanging out the whole time? Why yeah. wouldn't I? Yeah. Of course, well, gel shadowing for jumping. Just Ranger. like you know, I'm just like ah, there you are. You training know? gel, training gel will be your next mission for sure. Training gel will be your next mission once this is. But done. for now, gel has has been asking to come and just hang out. So yeah, <laughs> been hanging out, eating snacks, listening, planning. Bam Bam and Lux, and, and maybe Buster, maybe maybe uh, Bam Bam will help you as well because you two have become kind of a duo when it comes to your negotiations. It's true. <laughs> Bam, Bam Bam knows how to talk herself out of out of out of a, oh, a tough spot. Um, that you also like will be like, wait, what about that? <laughs> and maybe this. And it's like, yeah, that. <laughs> so in your in your in your in your conversational meanderings, Lux tracks down um, a habitable world in between where you're going and where you are. Oh, that's good. Descends down upon the planet. The colonists step outside, and everyone starts rebuilding, basically pulling out the parts of the um of the mothership. Yeah, and and and, and moving, doing the thing and moving those parts. 
bit by bit onto, onto the Valhalla. Nobody has Yotun. All of your robots are spent. All of your machines are spent. So physically, um, this whole Man, thing has to happen. We should have grabbed the Yotun. Well, you, you Big Mouth is shining, though. You just know oh, it. Oh, Big Mouth designs like cranes using spare yeah. parts and start. Yeah, like simple machine yeah. cranes. I think, like... I think our boy, I think our, I think our boy, boy is actually ready to be a grown up. I don't know if he knows it yet, but he is. We can't tell him. He just has to figure it out. Oh, I know. So yeah, so we take all his time. I imagine it takes us a couple nights. Oh, this is gonna take like a week and a half. Yeah, I figured. I figured like it's gonna be a decent amount of time. But this whole interior of the mothership gets cut into and welded into. Um, The battery itself is built into the inner workings of the Valhalla so that the Valhalla can be used to download um, the loom battery. We need to do a practice run. I'm just saying the three of us need to start screwing with people a little bit. We're just also, practicing. We're just I'm gonna, practicing. I'm, I'm gonna, con- I'm probably gonna, in the meantime as well, gonna convince Lux that like it would probably be beneficial, like if something went wrong, like that the Valhalla also has like backup piloting systems in our area of life support because what a, like it could free you know in the future this could be a really great scheme. <laughs> to pull again and again. Yeah. <laughs> also, <laughs> if something happens, Luck might forget about humans need for oxygen. I'm just saying. Yeah, you um, might. That's that's going to be I my more sure me- that immediate exact. thought. Is uh, Lux Lux sometimes forgets um, that people need people stuff. Yeah, like we'll basically create a secondary bridge yeah. out of out of some cool stuff that we find. Now, once this battery is built into the Valhalla. Lux right. has a question for you. Okay. Should we let the pilot go into the battery? What it, what what does it mean to go into the battery? Should we let in that the regard? Pilot, should we let okay. The Here's the deal. Like we don't, we don't know. Either. We don't know how loud the pilot is. Um. What was Can your we... take on the pilot before we captured him in the first place? Yeah. Because I don't want him turning them against us. Yeah, that seems like a bad idea. Can maybe, in can that maybe regard. I talk to the pilot first? Maybe I, would love to give, I would love to set the pilot loose, but I also don't want like him coming after me in 20 years. Mm-hmm. You know? Or now. Or now. <laughs> but yeah, but look, what's your take on that pilot? Maybe we shouldn't mess with people. I was ready to mess with I people. I mean, you overtook that pilot, right? Like, you overtook that pilot. No, with you, our help, kind of. You, you overtook the pilot. I yeah, I did. I, I unleashed the pilot upon you in the Yotun, and you defeated the pilot in combat. At which point, the pilot was subdued. Okay, but like, what's his personality? Like, do you think he would like be cool with this stuff? No. Okay. <laughs> so, could you convince him? Could you convince him that we want to set him free and, and have him be with a bunch of other people? All he has to do is keep his mouth shut. Well, not even about keep his mouth shut. He can't like. I'm just worried about him influencing them that, so that when they come out of the battery, they're going to be gung ho. Like, oh, because they're going to be they're th- th- with the nature of the state they've been in. They are going to be enamored by a new person, no Which matter is what. I said, if Lux can bring him around, so the new person probably won't get bill- bullied too hard when they have new information from the outside world. Like that person will become a leader if 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 we allow like that could that could be a very fast track from some random pilot to like zealot leader. Yes. So one possibility is we release the pilot into the battery and face the consequences. One possibility right. is we release the pilot into the all star system and face the consequences. One possibility is that we maintain the pilot as a prisoner and maintain the, and face the consequences. Right. There's always consequences. And one possibility is that we destroy the pilot and face the consequences. No. And we have not been lugging the pilot around all this time just to... to... They're probably kind of going nuts. We should probably put them in like a... Can we like put them in an iPad? 
for a minute and the talk to him. The pilot is in a containment unit. There is no other place to put the pilot. I mean, can we, can we like, plug into his containment unit and talk to him? You may. Uh, isolated? You may. Okay. All right. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just want to get. I want to. I want to see what the vibes are. Okay. So you 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 plug. You have Big Mouth wire up his data pad. The into thing the, into the yeah. containment unit. Yeah, like and it's wiped clean of any info, so I didn't steal something. Um. And and now you have access to the battery. The pilot is not making any effort to contact you. Yeah. That's fine. Shocked. Uh, I'm just going to say, hi, how are you? Are you okay? Do you, do you need food? <laughs> You're not getting any response from the pilot. You sit there quietly waiting for a response. You get nothing. Oh, I'm just going to like, 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 well, well, like we're going to have a night of me just. Look, we're really sorry we beat you up. <laughs> <laughs> but you are going to literally murder us, so I think you can understand where we're coming from. You did not defeat me. I'm sorry we beat you up. You did not defeat me. Okay, how did... It, uh, <laughs> why do you think the goal was to defeat you, question mark? You did not beat me up. Well, you're kind of stuck in a freaking battery thingy, guy. If you had beaten me up, I would be dead. I am still alive. No. Therefore, I have defeated you. Okay. I see how this is going to go. <laughs> I'm going to speak his own. I'm looking at her best. I'm going to I'm going to speak his language to him. I'm going to speak his language to him. Here we go. Are you all ready? Spent plenty of years on the internet, on the colony. <laughs> <laughs> I was just say, you know what? I am the superior being in this this because I do hold direct control over your fate. Bam, bam, do I... me a favor. Do me a favor. Mm -hmm. Do me a favor, real quick. Oh, or, we're or, into or, the Ripper. Roll. Ripper, do me a favor. Roll, oh God. Roll. All right. Roll mind. How many mind dice do you have? Sorry, just. My four. 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 Yes. All right. What what skills and training do you have that's pertinent to lean culture and understanding you? And and hacking. Uh, anything computers related. Smart. Yep. Curiosity. Too. Basic training. Mindfulness. Curiosity. Mindfulness. Um basic. Whatever was involved in basic. Yep. Um are seeing. Yep. And psychic. Which means psychic. Yep. Um, and I'm clever. Come on, Counselor Great. Troy. Roll, roll mind into a target of seven. Tell me how many victories you get. Six. I have four dice, right? I just said that. Yeah. Uh, six. That's two. One. Reroll okay. the one. Yeah. Five. Great. Uh, seven. Okay. Four. Outstanding. You were looking for a filter that would allow you to present yourself as Loom. You were looking for a credible Loom filter. Yes. This is a Loom. Yeah, yeah. And he's pissy. <laughs> <laughs> They're pissy. They are pissy. Well, now I'm just being toxic back to him. That's my my yeah, goal. Right <laughs> just see if he responds. That's, 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 that's what he's used to. When I'm on, when I'm at home, so I know. She said not till I'm in double digits. So, if you can get the help of this loom, this is the tool that you've been asking for. This loom has not been corrupted by the influence of compassion or empathy. All right. All right, all right. Oh. Bam, 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 bam. What? This pilot clearly is not happy with the fact that they are he got on the bottom right now, right? What if we offer them something they want? What do they want? Probably not to be in there. 
what do we do? I mean, we can't let the... I mean, Lux has to fight the guy if the guy's giving him trouble. I don't want to leave him right. Lux. Can we redirect how mad they are at the loom? Or can we offer them the chance to hang out with really cool loom that have been stuck, that we rescued, and are creating a very special place for? You're the you're the the negotiator here. Please I mean, be rude. I'm the, just I'm trying to get there. Yeah. With him. So I'll work on whatever, that. What method do you think would work better to get him so mad at the loom that abandoned him to us, hmm. or to use the other loom as like the treat if you do your chores? Okay. Here we go. I think. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what you got. Okay. There's definitely something so, to be said for making it like not his fault, because bullies love playing abandoned right. by Look. the other loom. Unlucky. It, it really sucks that your bros bailed on you, bro. Okay. Roll, roll heart. <laughs> this is Bam Bam now, right? Yep. I mean, I, you know, okay. I said like bro version of Loom, like lo the Loom version of bro, like Brotholomew or whatever this is. I think you have more heart than I do, so it's good that you're taking this one. Yeah, Bot I actually I took heart. I took heart in the last. Botholomew. Botholomew. That's you know what? Whenever I fi I'm finally ready for another cat. <laughs> I call everybody like Thal like by their name, but Tholomew at the end of it. So it's like my friend, my friend, jo you know, John is John Tholomew. You my know. youngest sister was supposed to be a, a boy, and my Sorry, dad used to, to mess with my mom all the time, yeah, thinking he was the name no of Bartholomew. All right. Once this plan is, is once stuff. this plan is securely in place, I think we call it and we had to do the actual assault during the next session because I imagine. This this will either be there was a lot of there was a lot of story this time we almost like yeah, two, yeah we did a lot higher it was a really good entire game play. yeah good well thank you I'm glad I I this is one of those things that could go either very simply well it was a right. whole new a whole new world needed to be built here yep so. all right you ready for my rolls I got five heart five heart what do you what do you bring into this role uh assertive, assertive. yep. Focus. Yes. Cool. Yes. Trying to be cool, bro. You are trying to be cool. Okay. Um, relentless. Yes. <laughs> you guys are getting so experienced. I, I uh, love the fact that you're using relentless so much when you're like, this isn't going to be a used. It's yeah. getting used every time. I'm like leaning into it so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it was like the perfect thing to tell me. Like, I was like, yes, that's exactly the word for who she is right now. <laughs> Um, <laughs> inspiring. No, no. Uh, righteous, righteous. Definitely right. It has it has an air of that. Okay. It's yeah. Okay. And then that's, training. That's really uh, important. basic. Six. Uh, strategy. No. This combat. No. Piloting. That's it. That's all uh, I got. For I'm gonna those. give you piloting. I'm gonna give you piloting. I think you should get piloting because. Oh yeah, because we're both pilot. pilots. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, I'll be like. Okay. I'll be like. Target of seven. I was Target ready to seven. fight for that one too. Target of seven. Okay. And and, and you got five. Of seven. So Okay, here we go. Oh th then roll the thing. Let me Where'd it go? That. Now this oh, is there it went. this is seven. It's probably not gonna go anywhere. Oh. Thanks for yeah. that. Yeah. Three. Name. Uh huh. Five. Okay. Six, mm -hmm. and I think I have one more. Mm -hmm. Six. Nice. Okay, so that part's good. But and the loom got an eight, and on the one die got an eight. Ah. So, <laughs> so, in light of this, I will say this is enough to catch the loom's attention, and the loom just says, "They did. They did abandon me." They abandoned me to an infestation. I had you right where I wanted you. It's true. <laughs> hey, and, for and all it's, it's worth, 
and see you were how a fun great a pilot five. you are. Was- <laughs> Great that. Yeah, 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 exactly. Because you're, you yeah, know. yeah. She die. said you're a really good pilot. And the thing is, is like for all it's worth, like that was really tough. And you were really, you were really worthy adversary. <laughs> I was a worthy Wait. adversary. I, I was a superior adversary. Absolutely. Yeah. That's why we couldn't just let you die. We couldn't leave you stuck in there. We don't want you to be stuck in there. We want yeah, you. Yeah, you're be, like so be a cool. pilot because you're so cool. <laughs> That's right. What's your name? Uh, or what's blip. your designation? Blip. Blip. Well, that's cool. Oh, like a radar? Like a I like on that. A radar? <laughs> that's very good. Radars are. Do you means. like? What else have you flown? Uh, that's an excellent question. Uh, dang! Give me one sec. Head. I God, you're like excited for that. Damn. I can tell you're like, oh, dang, that's a cool question. <laughs> yeah. There's, see, the thing is, I am, I am in the process of working things out on that subject. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, you, you can just say like, oh, yeah, if you no, fly, you know, you can give some general oh, terms. Here's a we'll question. Like, I, 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 I like to I, fly. I've, I've flown Valkyries before. Really? Yes. I love the Valkyries. I wanted a Valkyrie. The haulers are bigger and more responsibility. Yeah, it's probably kind of boring though, huh? It's not as like when you can just be as, out fighting or something or doing something cool. It's not as fast paced. So you like you like fast ships? I do like fast ships. Well, I like fast loom, so welcome to the club. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, 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 do you like? You know, uh, I'm trying to think of things to talk to him about. Um, do you know how to do a barrel roll? Of course. Even the most, even the most, even the most, uh, simple pilot can perform a barrel roll. I'm going to like send him a few like, like pictures of like, like old, like fighter ships from earth. And be like, Ooh, these fighters like be easily was... defeated. No, but like, think it. Right, but th- but think about think fly. about how that would feel and how that would sound. I sent him like some videos. I sent him some cool <laughs> videos of like pilots back in the day, like getting off, getting on and off ships, and just being like, "Whoa, this is off. Yeah, we did it!" Like really cool, weird maneuvers that he's probably never even heard of. of. Of human pilots. Yeah, I crush human pilots. Yeah, but <laughs> but watch this, and then one of them is like it, it's like a vi- it's like a video of like somebody like doing something silly, like something totally pointless. But it's like whoa, that's like really impressive that they can even have that amount of control in that kind of engine. You know what I mean? Like that kind of thing. Like like pilots like like bouncing ships. What exactly are you are you trying to give this loom a sense of respect for human life? Is that the goal here? No. No, it's just to, it's it's literally to get to like to be like, but that's cool, right? This is neat. It, it, at this point, at this point, all you're getting back is okay. So you just you want you want okay. So go ahead and make a hard roll to try and. I'm trying to become. I'm literally trying to make friends with him. Okay. Let me put it that way. I'm really like, like literally just trying to like get him to soften up a little oh, bit. Okay. I don't that's... need him to soften up all the way. I just wanted to soften up a bit more. I, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, wor- I'm going through the process of like making connections with him, and then, na- and then eventually, I'm going to get into the real, the real thing. But I'm like, just kind of okay. Make a, it would be cool. A- it, it could be cool if I'm giving you him somebody to talk to right now because he hasn't yeah. had anybody in like two months to okay. communicate with. So solid, first of all, grab your five hard dice. Your tar- okay, it's okay. the same target as last time. It's a target. Of yeah. Seven. Let's just see. Let's just see if you can dig a little deeper yeah. than you did before. He got, All another right, eight. One. he got another eight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rerolling the one. Two. <laughs> okay. <What's... laughs> um, okay, so this is now the second actual dice. Yep. Eight. Okay, so you're down to one. Yeah. One. Okay. Rerolling this one. Okay. Eight. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. I know. I guess you got the ones. You just yep. don't so get you're the extra. Right Six. Now. That's three. Six. Yep. Uh, and then one. 
Okay. Six on the reroll. There you go. Yep. There you I go. don't know where I'm at now. I've you totally got one, lost it. Four. Got okay, one thank you. I, sw- oh, I had three. Okay. There cool. we go. A number I don't have to reroll. I mean, if you're going to roll eights, that's when to do it. Right? When you have ones in a like eight, one, one, eight, eight, one. It's- okay. So you finally show this lumen image of like, of like dog fighting in its heyday. Right. right, star citizen, or maybe yeah, like, <laughs> like, like 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 you show you show this loom an image of two um two Pegasuses going up against four dragon starfighters, right? Recordings right. that you have from probably from somewhere on Planet Link or somewhere on Planet Battleground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the loom watches this image and watches these pilots work, and the loom says, given equal craft given equal given equal um like tolerances i think i think i can still take them you know maybe but, maybe one day we'll we'll have a dog fight of our own i'm but a pilot that is, too but that is the most but that you see what i'm saying there was some hesitation yeah, yeah, yeah. you got you got a little bit yeah yeah yeah. yeah yeah he's like it's kind of cool yeah <laughs> I probably but I'm not gonna admit it that. to you. Yeah, I'd yeah, yeah, yeah. Better than that, as opposed yeah. to like just ignoring what you're showing him. You know, so, we could use a good pilot, and it's a yeah. shame that you are stuck in that container. But he, I got, I got some, I got some options for you, guy. I'd like because to see you fly. One, I think it would be cool to see to let you out of the gate. But thing is, is there's another guy here, and we're doing stuff that's a little different. Okay? So, just so you're aware, we saved like 183 Loom people from Loom, your home planet, while you've been away. Lumina. So, we saved like 183 people in the core of your planet. They're inside of a battery. We're going to partner up with them and do some stuff so they can have a little colony of their own because they're super old. They don't need to integrate into your society. I bet they could use a pilot. They couldn't integrate with our society. It, this is why. They why is that? Exactly. Why? Why? why question That's why they got left behind. <laughs> <laughs> they are older models. They are obsolete. Right. But... Older models probably hold information that has been lost. Then it was lost for a reason. Yeah, because you're stupid. I mean, boy, I'm gonna like you pressure. know stop typing for a second. I'm gonna say I'm like because he can't hear me, but I'm just gonna be like, I totally want to put him in there and let him get bullied now. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna make so much fun of I him. I think if we tell them he's coming, they would. Hey, yeah. this guy's coming who thinks that you're all obsolete. I mean, Spark's not obsolete. That's actually an really. angle. That's actually a really good angle, Ripper. Oh my <laughs> god. You're, you're going to be so good at political intrigue when we grow up. Okay. You're going to be so good at being an adult. <laughs> so I'm kind of pause for a second and I'm like, okay, what are we... Okay, what else do I tell? Like, do we want to offer him the opportunity to speak to them? Lux, what do you think? Do you do you think we should do? I mean, Lux, what's your feelings on this? Because you've asked us about it, but what do you think? Based on what we've how yeah, he's we re- reacting so far. All right. Would you rather him plug in with you, or would you rather him plug in with them? Between those two, Lux options? takes a, a moment to think and says, "I think Ripper's right," and we're just gonna stop the game there. There's no need to go further. Ripper. Yes. I hope I get a chance to roll on how hard he gets bullied next time, though. Oh I'm just putting God. it out there. I just. <laughs> I'm. I'm thinking. I, say, I feel like. I feel like now that Spark has met us, something's probably been going on in the battery, and I have a feeling if we handed him to Spark, they could actually examine somebody from this time and kind of make their own assessment. Well, of here, him. I think Ripper's right about preparing the, the team and this and that. In fact, that is such, yeah. a, that's such a strong observation, Ripper, that I'm going to give you a free virtue 
that is uh -huh. of questionable value. <laughs> <laughs> Your free gimme virtue is heartless. <laughs> <laughs> I love that so much. <laughs> She's stone cold. <laughs> Have you met? No, you haven't met my eight-year-old. They are. Eight-year-old, yeah. Kids can be pretty brutal. He will just punch. It's funny. Bone. It's funny because that's like the perfect dichotomy of our two characters. Yep. Is, and I've never been able to put my finger on it quite right. And that's exactly it. Ripper is Ripper is like, oh, screw them. And like, and she's really sweet. And she's really sweet and like a precocious little girl. Whereas like Bam Bam is like, oh my God, I like, just want everybody to get along. But yeah. she's so assertive about it. Yep. And also, and also not, not unviolent about it. Like, oh yeah like heartless <laughs> brash and big-hearted yeah. now you know why we're partners it's balance all right so yes that is what you do and you know there's no need to go through all the step-by-step -step of it because it's all behind closed doors there's no need for any of that needless to yeah. say needless to say your strategy benefits you with a battery that can help you achieve your goal you absolutely mm -hmm. are getting some extra support on your next role. So this next role, this next session will be about infiltrating the loom security around all star all star system or all star shipyards as it's called. Um because Big Mouth just named it. <laughs> and it's fine, uh, he's pulling his weight now. Yep. That's what it is. And uh <laughs> And uh, stealing your 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 troll ship. Thank you. I, you do you mind me yeah. just bogarting your name and putting it in the book? Let me just ask you. I will. I will definitely. What well, name? you both are getting special thanks on this book anyway. Just so oh yay! Oh, yeah. was, <laughs> I, I didn't know who you were talking to. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> so be, be what did, what, be what did we name? So, so this is this book. This book is all. This book originally was just going to be the adventure. I don't know if I mentioned this, but it there's so much material that I've pulled from in what I call the data deck files, which are a series mm -hmm. of. There's about yeah, like, yeah, like yeah, exactly. And so many of them are about the loom to begin with, that I've just decided to pull together everything that I've got on the loom into one source book. And and I've. I, there's a couple of things that I'm adding in there, the troll ship being one of them, the, the Valkyrie being another, which is why I needed to look into it. The Valhalla needs to be there, and that's when I realized that I hadn't put in there. Uh, but all of these things are going to be part of um, a supplement that I'm just calling Power Play, because to me, that's what this is. Um, mm -hmm. So we're getting a Loom source book out of this whole deal. Right now, all together, love it. it's 50 pages long. So there's a lot oh, of material wow. here. Yep. Nice. Including a decent amount of material on the adventure itself. So it's not insubstantial. This is some big stuff for sure. And it'll come out originally like in the initial release as a as a just a PDF on Illustrated, just like all the other source books. But in time we'll get around to compiling it into something a little bit more meaty. Fun. And there's gonna have to be a Saurian one too, because I have so much material on the Saurian horde in the data decks. So. I, I know I, it, it was kind of funny to me that like it, it kind of like this game was sort of presented to me as like di like fighting dinosaurs and robots in space and there was like a lot of emphasis on the dinosaurs and we were like robots. <laughs> well, it's good. There's there is actually a whole lot to explore in the Yeah. Dinosaurs. And one of the things that I mean, you, yeah. one of the things that you've sort of touched on um just ever so slightly is the origin of the spore which which um, isn't something that everybody knows a whole lot about, but there's 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 worlds within worlds here, and it's all interconnected in various ways. And if you follow any of these threads long enough, like one of the things that you've come to the conclusion of, and, and you're right, is that there's a shared history between the Loom and the and the Saurians. Which, right. like to me, that's interesting because obviously the Loom is kind of a symbol of internet Nazi culture. And the Saurians are kind of a symbol of old white man Nazi culture. Like, and in the end, it is the same people. Like, 
it should and, be. And also, <laughs> yeah, and, and, and also, you know, there's some real truth behind once you break down their wall and just show them their own humanity. I mean, that's what was happened with Lux is it wasn't our humanity that we showed Lux. It was Lux's humanity and desires for some good things for some people, yeah. right? Because yeah. Lux Spark was always very was from the jump the primary source of concern and care and and yep. love even in that way, you know, importance, yeah. value yeah. to Lux. And and I think that there's a lot to be said for communicating with people, you know, sometimes it's hard to sit with the idea that people are basically good when so many of them have so many such so many in such strong, really bad ideals. Yes. <laughs> well right. Yep. yep. Yeah. That that harm and, and, other people. But if you can just get someone to see that it generally does change their mind but like, also like breaking somebody away you know, from they're... a bad collective mm -hmm. goes with yeah. that yeah you yeah. know or or providing them with a new collective that teaches them something better yeah new community, know? yeah yeah it's like your community like it's like you're talking about it like representing like sort of the the edge lords of the internet a little bit you know it, it's kind of like they, oh, no. you know, what, what's the word I'm trying to think of? They, they like, once you get them offline for a minute and you have them go touch some grass, you know, and, and they go out and actually enjoy life outside of like sitting and staring at a screen and straight and yelling at strangers, which is what they do collectively. I mean, how many, how many streamers have you seen start and get big with really problematic uh fans and followers and and their community but then as they grow up and they realize what assholes that's my swear word yeah. today they were um suddenly they're like whoa 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 and they're calling out their own people and being like actually i think you're wrong and you'll go too far with that i see what you're trying to say but you the way you're going about it is just bad and you know and i've and that's i think it's a it's a hopeful thing to see in in these in these people who gained their notoriety and their popularity mm -hmm. by being jerks yeah and then yeah. they get tired of it and they outgrow it you know and and, and knowing that people can is a reason to keep pushing and, and also and, and presenting them with options when you when you look at the deal with like there's like what there's um how many of them uh 183 or whatever in that battery they've been together for a long time they they probably like kind of have established social patterns. They have no new information, no new things happening to them. But they also right? have been at war, so they're sort of uncorrupted in some ways. That's yeah, yep. but but at the same time, they could be the old guard that started all this in the first place. Oh, they certainly yeah. are, and that doesn't mean they can't yeah. take another attack. And and the in, and the relationship that you've had with now the advantage that you have here is Lux, because Lux has been spending time with you, and Lux is also the person who's freed these people. We've totally so, corrupted Lux. I am having yeah, like some Lux. kind of crazy malfunction. I am no longer on camera, but I, I am, see it, yeah. I am picking up my audio. So this is well, probably... Well, yeah. Well, like, yeah, we can hear you on the stream. <laughs> yeah, um, it's a good, it's as good a time to stop since we were supposed to be done 15 minutes ago. Yeah. You yeah. know, but some things are just fun to talk about, and this was a really story-heavy day. Yeah. You know, it was Thank hard to cover so much an done. hour. Thank you for thank you for playing. It was a lot of fun. I'm excited to see what happens in the next session. I think it's going to be great to see what becomes of Big Mouth. Um, and I think that you know this new colony is something that'll be a lot of fun to add to the uh, to the source book as well. I think that totally thought we were going to ditch Big Mouth, and now I'm going to be sorry to see him go. <laughs> it's like we adopted him. He's like he'll he live on in the source book. He'll be fine. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, these are all. This is all. This is all becoming canon. This is all becoming, yeah. you know, Jump Rangers canon. So, um, at least, at least the general gist of it. And uh, there's no reason why that can't be part of it. Um, yeah. Thank you for playing. Thank you to everybody who watches this. I hope everybody has a great week. We'll be back next week unless something comes up. And uh, anybody else got anything to say before we cut out? No, I'm just glad I was here. Don't be a stranger. Whales. Ranger.
There be wells there. There be wells here. <laughs> there be wells here. 